Dr. Carrie Hepburn with Compass PD, and I am so excited because you guys are meeting one of my very dear friends, Betsy Rivas. She's been in education in secondary and higher ed for the last 20 years. Betsy is currently the Director of Professional Development at Dallas College. She started out as a high school art and business teacher in St. Louis County, Missouri, in one of the large suburban school districts out there. And then she moved into curriculum instruction and assessment. And that's where I met Betsy. We were um, at the same large school district outside of the St. Louis area in St. Charles County. And um, we spent many days and nights just talking about curriculum. What we're doing is we're going to talk to you today about a project that we're super excited about and that Compass PD is going to be launching. Welcome, Betsy. Hi, Carrie. Thanks for having me here today. I, I'm really very excited to talk about our new Curriculum Academy. Yeah, it's going to be so exciting. So as we think about this, what is Compass PD's Curriculum Academy? So Curriculum Academy is really um, a learning and professional development opportunity that was created by educators for educators. So we recognize that, you know, uh, Carrie and I have had really good experiences leading curriculum development with teachers and that we really saw a way, a path that we could help other school leaders learn to do the same. So it's um, really inspired and um, based on roots of, you know, Wiggins and McTai, so understanding by design, other uh, fantastic resources and supports around curriculum development, uh, rigorous curriculum design, engaging students through performance assessment, which is really another key part of this uh, curriculum academy. And really being able to measure and understand the depth of understanding, uh, being able to evaluate that among students and learners. Um, but, you know, being able to package all of this together in a way that's really a, in a palatable format mm -hmm. for a variety of education professionals and leaders to learn uh, how to develop a curriculum that can be implemented broadly and we say this uh, with excitement and confidence because Carrie and I have done this for hundreds of teachers mm -hmm. um, in, in various experiences that we've had. And as Carrie mentioned that, you know, one of the things that I've learned after moving from the St. Louis area to Dallas and now in my new role with Dallas College is that the, the ideas and the practices behind uh, really effective curriculum design are transferable. Mm -hmm. So I'm implementing these best practices and these sound research-based practices for curriculum development in the work that I'm doing um, in leading um, non-teacher educators. Mm -hmm. So within the student services staff to develop a training curriculum based on the same concepts. So, you know, uh, that's why I'm really excited about the Curriculum Academy and really, you know, how others can benefit from learning the processes that Carrie and I are putting together. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just, I'm listening to Betsy and I'm writing in my professional notebook. I'm not sure if you could tell, but um, a couple of things are sticking out to me as you are chatting about this. And so something I do want to point out is that you are using this process. I love how you said non-teacher educators. So they've never written a curriculum before. They're seeing value in the work and they're seeing how um, they can do this same process to write a curriculum for their job and for training people who will be doing the same type of work that they will be doing and to set expectations, different like performance events or different assessments, formative assessments along the way to um, make sure that they're understanding their job and their role in the work that they're doing. Um, I think what's really beautiful is that you and I both have spent years and years and years reading like books that are just enormous amounts of books. And let's be honest, like 
I am a huge fan of the authors of the books and have read most of them, but if you don't have a background in curriculum design and instruction, it's not easy to, to like maneuver and, and decipher. And so it can be overwhelming trying to navigate that work. And so I remember just the conversations that as we would read books, as a team, we would come together and process and develop an understanding. And so not everyone gets that opportunity. And something that Betsy, you've done a really great job with me is helping me understand how to bring curriculum writing to a level that builds knowledge, educator knowledge. So wherever they're starting as um, a curriculum writer or a leader of curriculum, we're going to make sure that you have a super strong foundation and understanding of best practices and research-based practices, and then build on that as we go along through the process. Mm -hmm. And Carrie, if I can add, you know, there are a couple of benefits with that. Mm -hmm. And so learning more about the how and the why around curriculum writing and curriculum development um, definitely, you know, enriches that, um, that learning um, acquisition, right, for the yeah. process of how it's done. Um, so there really is a depth of understanding that then can be explained to others, right, yeah. with great confidence. So really having that sound understanding about the why and the how of the what of the curriculum um, development of the co curriculum components, right? right. Um, and then the other benefit is that in the process of writing curriculum for a content area, and this is something I talked about just this morning with a group of writers that I'm leading, um, is that really the depth of understanding for the content yeah. is like exponential, right? Mm -hmm because the process of writing causes all of the writers to think more deeply, much more deeply and much more critically about what is being taught and making those thoughtful and intentional decisions and selections of what should be included in the curriculum and how. Mm -hmm. And so in learning you know, the process of curriculum development and curriculum writing, then you know really makes that connection and that link to an enhanced understanding for for the teachers that are involved in the process um, you know in translating that then into the classroom experience and really that's those are the links that you know the in the chain that work together that improve student learning outcomes yes I'm, I'm sitting here just reflecting on um, working with teacher teams and, and currently I'm working with a teacher team this week um, and just reflecting on, as you said, that the depth of understanding increases greatly. Every team I've written curriculum with said it transformed them as an educator. Because well, learning is a transformative process, right? Oh, I love that. I love that. That should be a t-shirt. I do. I really truly do believe one of the best ways as a district we can build capacity is through writing curriculum and having a leader facilitate that and it be teachers that they're writing that curricula, that they're doing that work and they're doing that learning. I say all the time, the people doing the work are the people doing the learning. Right. And so if I can, you know, just build off that word about building capacity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's why, you know, this is designed to be an academy to help, you know, professionals, designated professionals within districts, within schools, learn how to write a curriculum based on these sound research practices, right? Mm -hmm. Research-based research best practices. Um, because... Carrie and I could come in and lead groups. We've done that work, right? But um, it doesn't really benefit, you know, the professionals in the school and in the district um, because we've, we've done all the, you know, like we basically led, they followed, right? So the depth of learning in that is shallow, much more shallow than learning how to lead 
the process, yeah. right? And so that's really why the Curriculum Academy um, was developed is to help districts and schools build capacity uh, for developing rich and rigorous curriculum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be offering the Curriculum Academy this summer of 2022. And um, I kind of wanted to just veer off just a little bit, but stay a little bit on top, uh, stay on topic, but veer off just a little. One of the things I'm wondering is if we could talk about like at the Curriculum Academy, what people can expect would be happening during, you know, like what's the learning going to be like? So one mm -hmm. of the things I think that Betsy, you and I could talk about is that we're writing a curriculum or we've written a curriculum for how to write curriculum and how to mm -hmm. lead teams. There's nothing out there to help people with this that is easy to navigate without reading the stack of books and try to figure out how this process goes. And so we've written a curriculum that's very clear and concise, guiding people step-by-step step through how to do this work and how to, um, I, I loved, I love this about you, Betsy, is you're really good at project management. And you were, you said, our curriculum academy attendees, participants need to understand project management too. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm pulling, you know, from the side, my document yes. <laughs> that uh, my working document of the scope and sequence mm -hmm. for the curriculum academy. So um, we're designing really a, a full week, you know, rich experience for people designated within schools and within school districts to to come with us through the journey of the Curriculum Academy. And so um, it, it's a journey, it's a roadmap, right? For how to develop a curriculum. So it begins with really a, a unit that we've titled Preparing to Lead. Mm -hmm. So Preparing to Lead is really a good portion of the first day. And so it begins with um, you know, a concentration about backward design, mm -hmm. really, which is the model, the framework for good, uh, effective curriculum development. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, we move on to uh, learning about student learning theory, right? So there it definitely has to be a, a critical foundational piece to curriculum writing that we should be ever mindful about um, how our students learn right, pedagogy. Um, then we move on to learning about the framework for writing. So this is uh, kind of going to uh, cover the curriculum writing workflow, um, how to get from beginning to end, hmm. and um, a framework for unit design. So in this last piece is really critical. And this was really a discovery that I made in just self-reflection in making my move from St. Louis to Dallas and making my move from, you know, working in K-12 into mm -hmm. higher ed. Mm -hmm. And that was recognizing who I was leading. You know, we really spend a lot, our, our focal point is dedicated to our students, right? And the students we serve and um, kind of the, their world but when we're curriculum writing um, and we're leading that process, the people in the room are the people who are learning. Mm -hmm. And that was really a connection I didn't make in the process until I was outside the process and I was able to be in a space to self-reflect. And I recognized that adult learning theory is another important piece to preparing to lead curriculum writing. And so that's an important component of this first um, unit about preparing to lead. So we'll talk about the curriculum leader mindset. Mm -hmm. So in, in some areas, curriculum leaders may be teacher leaders. So there's a little bit of a shift that needs to happen um, in moving from like teacher mindset to now curriculum leader mindset. So mm -hmm. what is that? 
And then the other piece about engaging adult learners is understanding andragogy. So yeah. we'll spend some time exploring andragogy um, and that theory around um, adult learning, you know, based on the work of Malcolm Knowles specifically. Yes, yes. And then we move into the milestone. So are we ready to talk about that, Carrie? Yes, I love that. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So really there are three milestones in the process. So um, one it, milestone one is the desired results. So, sorry, I'm thumbing through my, my scope and sequence document here. Yeah. yeah. So that includes an introduction to the curriculum template that Compass has created to mm -hmm. share so that it really becomes kind of the, well, the framework, but rather a recipe doesn't have all the ingredients in, but it gives, a, it's that framework that is a guide for, you know, the leaders, the later curriculum leaders to follow. Um, this unit will also cover topics such as transfer goal, mm -hmm. uh, everybody's favorite, Carrie, unpacking standards. Right. So if there's you a- you listen to me in the morning, you know I love <laughs> unpacking standards. It is life-changing. <laughs> right. So we are going to spend a considerable amount of time on that because um, it, it requires that it, it's a, it's a heavy lift and it mm -hmm. requires that dedication to that place in the curriculum, uh, because without, I mean, it can be a, a make or break point for a curriculum, yeah. right, Carrie? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, this, um, uh, milestone one also covers forming units, essential, um, understanding statements and developing essential questions. So, you know, it's all process oriented. So here's the concept. This is how you can lead a group in the development of these pieces. Can I pause you right there for just mm -hmm. a moment? Uh, Bethy and I have had opportunities. People have asked us to audit and uh, just kind of look at their curricula. And you can tell immediately when you're studying a curricula by looking at assessments and instructional practices if milestone one has, there's not been enough time spent on that. Because what you'll notice is that it's the, what students need to know, understand, be able to do, isn't consistent throughout the curricula. And you'll notice that there are assessments that are low level of rigor. And then I'll notice the instructional practices as I study the curriculum more, match the assessments, which match the amount of time that they've spent for milestone one of curricula design. And um, it really is important to spend time on that foundational work, which I think is really vital. We, we really did make sure we built a lot of time in for that in the curriculum academy, setting people up for success. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so now we head into milestone two, which is evidence of learning, okay? So, mm -hmm. Um, what do you think the evidence of learning will be in a curriculum? Two types of assessments, right? Mm -hmm. Really centers on summative and formative assessment writing. So how to lead the process, how to uh, teach people about um, educators, about summative assessments and formative assessments, and then, you know, how to lead that process of developing high quality assessments, both summative and formative. And so we'll talk about really the value of um, authentic performance summative assessments. Um, and really the reason for that, just a little glimpse into the, the academy, is it's a much better method to gauge depth of understanding of every individual student. Mm -hmm. So um, with that then, of course, you know, giving some assistance and support about developing scoring guides around that so that you know when it comes to the summative assessments that those who uh, complete the curriculum academy really have the full package right about the summative assessments and um, of course the other side of that um, the the you think about leading and lagging indicators so the lead indicators are those formative assessments mm -hmm. and so um, there will be you know, balance time around creating quality formative assessments, you know, which support the learning activities that lead to the summative. Summative, yes, yes. Okay, moving on to milestone three then is the sample learning plan. Mm -hmm. So 
two big ideas here. One are the learning objectives and then the lesson outlines themselves, mm -hmm. right? So what we've talked about is the transfer goal. We've talked about unpacking the standards, the essential outcomes, the um, essential questions, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then we've talked about the um, assessments, right? Um, I left out the themes, the units, right? Because right. each unit is going to have that summative and the formative assessment. So now we get into, you know, the more granular part, mm -hmm. which is actually the last part of backward design or understanding by mm -hmm. design. And that's the lessons themselves. Yeah. So I think oftentimes, Carrie, a lot of people want to begin with the lessons. Like I want to include oh. this. I want to include that. Right. Yeah. And everybody has a favorite that they want to include. So, but is it really, is it really attached to the standards and the, those power standards, priority, essential standards? Is it really tied to that? Um, or are those things that we enjoy doing? So it causes everyone to really, um, you know, critically think about uh, the choices that we're making for the curriculum. You know, um, a predictable problem, and, and I've been doing a lot, a lot of work about around this in elementary. It's a predictable elementary problem mostly, but I think we're starting to see it in some content areas and secondary as well. But um, a predictable problem we're seeing is that people are purchasing a resource in order to quickly get something in teachers' hands rather mm -hmm. than write a curriculum and then have a resource support the implementation of that curriculum. And what I see a lot is confusion. People, it's not streamlined. Um, teachers don't have the buy-in, the why, the understanding. And so um, when we follow the process of studying best practice and writing a curriculum that's aligned with best practice and then say, okay, now we're ready what's going to be a resource that we can use to support us in this implementation versus, I think um, Wiggins and McTie talk a lot about how people would do content coverage versus uncovering the content. And it would be like, do the first quarter of the book by the end of first quarter. Half the book has to be done by, you know, January. And then just thinking of it about trying to hurry up and just plow through versus having kids, our students like uncover the understandings. When we think about those understandings, those big ideas, we always had kids in that direction and we differentiate using different products, processes, resources, time, those kinds of things. Um, but it leads to higher levels of rigor and increased relevance compared to some of the ways that I think um, people are having to navigate the, the process right now. So we're hoping to help people get back in line of following a way that will help um, their teachers feel confident with the vision, the mission of this work. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain freedom and independence mm -hmm you know, and being able to write your own curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, really, again, thinking about the students in mind, the culture of the school, you know, um, how students can respond, you know, because you're leveraging the subject matter experts in the room yeah. in the process of curriculum writing. So those content experts, those grade level experts, mm -hmm. um, you know, who, who are doing the writing. And so the curriculum academy again, is designed to equip people who are leading the process yeah. really to engage and leverage those subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, but wait, there's more, yeah. Carrie. So there's, <laughs> there's one more piece to the yeah. academy and that is about project management. Mm -hmm. So because um, curriculum, a curriculum writing project really is managing a project. So it's not an afternoon activity, right? This is, it's kind of time over time progress. And so, you know, there are a couple of important components to know here is just some really basic light, you know, well, what do we mean by project management? What are things that I should be thinking about? 
And so we'll talk about some very, very basic um, principles around project management. And then, you know, the second component to that is really about managing curriculum projects. So things like benefits of setting an agenda, having a communication plan. Um, part of that is identifying all the key stakeholders mm -hmm. in the process, right? Um, and how they need to be included with that communication plan. So that's kind of a bonus yeah. piece that we put into the Curriculum Academy to help leaders um, kind of understand project management, but how they can manage the process of uh, writing a curriculum, right, with a group of people and, and really setting those leaders up for success. Yes. I feel like that I learned the hard way <clears throat> through trial and error over and over. And, and just all of us, uh, a group of us just kind of trying different things out and finding out what worked and what didn't work because it is something that when you're in that position or new to that position, you really aren't, or as a teacher leader that's going to be doing this work, you really, there's not a class that helps you figure this out. It's usually um, kind of through trial and error. So I feel like we're noticing some predictable problems and trying to set up our participants through the curriculum academy, our teacher leaders and our leaders of curriculum writing up to be able to be ready for those and have a plan that will help them navigate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have to say, you know, my experience working secondary ed and, you know, mm -hmm. K in the K-12 world, never heard a lot of conversation about project management in the work that I was doing. And yeah, it was only, you know, stepping outside, again, self-reflecting mm -hmm. of, you know, what makes that pro the experience better. Um, this is one thing I think that would have been helpful yeah. to me at the time. So um, the other thing to add here is that um, Carrie and I talked a lot about, you know, how the, part the um, participants of the Curriculum Academy, you know, how will they learn? And, you know, so we are, of course, thinking about adult learning theory, but we see a lot of value in the gradual release method. And mm -hmm. so um, one of the expectations is, you know, um, the um, I do, you do, um, teach others to do model. And so the culminating really event or piece of this is going to be an experience that Carrie and I call the practicum. Mm -hmm. And so after, you know, um, the few days of learning, then the curriculum academy will end in the practicum experience where everyone who has been, um, who has gone through the learning days of the academy will be able to put everything to use in some form or fashion with their fellow uh, curriculum academy students and receive that peer feedback in the process as a way to prepare. So it makes it very practical, mm -hmm. a very practical experience, which goes back to something you were saying earlier, Carrie, about, you know, in our teacher prep programs, typically um, that curriculum um, class that we take is very high level and the resources that are out there are very high level. Mm -hmm. So we recognize there's often a gap between, um, you know, what you learn and then the, the ability to apply that. Mm -hmm. And so we want this to make, uh, we want the curriculum academy to be as practical as an experience as possible. Yes. Yes, we do. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for adding that. Um, let's talk for just a moment about how the idea for the Curriculum Academy transpired. How did we, what, what happened and led us to this? Yeah, so um, that's interesting. So um, as I said, I've moved from secondary to higher ed and really it was the, um, I saw a lot of value in developing um, new training programs and having a curriculum around that instead of, you know, a list of lessons or um, kind of an add-on experience where you might begin with something and then 
you know, oh yeah, we should add this into the training program. Mm -hmm. You know, from my experience in K-12, really seeing the value of a curriculum and making the connection of developing intentional training and professional development learning experiences for people in new roles, so mm -hmm. new employees. And so that's really where I began to make the connection, but where the fireworks really went off was when I began to implement the process and really witnessing firsthand how it tr can truly be transferable mm -hmm. um, among different audiences and people of different experiences. And then really what it takes, you know, as I say, to chunk it down, um, to make it digestible, because, you know, one thing Peter Senge taught us, right, is how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? So how do we write a curriculum document? Because that can, it can really be daunting to see, you know, like, hey, here's the template, this is what we're going to do, mm -hmm. um, really needs to take an, um, an effective guide, mm -hmm. right, to lead a group of people through that. So Really, it was through um, that experience and uh, my prior experience of learning about UBD, understanding by design, the experience of leading others, and then now the experiencing experience of realizing how the idea can be transferable and how it can be taught, right? How we can teach people a process to create an effective curriculum. For sure. I love, I love it. Every time you remind me about Peter Senge's one elephant at a time or one bite at a time, how to eat an elephant that always makes me think, okay, yeah. this is doable when we break it down into chunk, chunks and make That's it. That's okay, Carrie. Sometimes I'm eating one elephant at a time, but you know, <laughs> it's just the day, you know? It really is the day. Uh, what I'm speaking to is Betsy and I recently collaborated on a project for a school district that they don't have curriculum leaders or they have very few curriculum leaders trying to lead all of the curricula in pre-K through 12. And so as we were talking with them, we said, why don't we partner with you to build capacity by bringing in, you know, 30, 25 or 30 of your teacher leaders and let's help them, let's build them up so they can help you stay um, current, stay relevant, keep engaging high level um, experience, learning experiences for kids in your district, even without having full-time people doing solely that work. And so we're running into that in a, in a lot of places that we're supporting is they need to build capacity. And now I'm seeing that more than ever because many districts that do have curriculum departments, they're not able to pull teachers to write curriculum because there are no substitute teachers. So they, even if they wanted to write curriculum, they couldn't. And some districts have such financial constraints, they're completely eliminating curriculum departments. And so in the summer, they're going to need to have to have leaders, principals, education leaders, teacher leaders writing this curriculum. And so we're gonna be supporting them through the Curriculum Academy, teaching them how to write a curriculum and, and doing this work. And so Betsy, I'm so sad because our time is really like coming to an end. So as we just come to a close, is there anything you just would like to add? Yeah, I think the, um, the thing is, I was just kind of thinking about this is, you know, kind of that reason why it, you, so you've described building capacity and staff and, mm -hmm. um, something to be mindful about is the purpose there is creating building capacity and staff for curriculum writing. We talked about some of the benefits of that at the beginning, right? Understanding the why and the how, also uh, creating a greater depth of understanding of content. Um, but, um, you know, creating that, that plan, mm -hmm. that teaching and learning plan, right? That then can be delivered 
in with some consistency, mm -hmm. right? Among uh, those teachers in that same course, that content area, that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and doing it in a way that they can support each other in the process because they're all working from the same plan, yeah. from the same document that was developed with um, great thought, deep thought and intentionality of what is best for our students. And so the, the result that can be expected in, in going through the process, right? In writing a, a curriculum using subject matter experts are then in certainly improved student learning outcomes. That's the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. And with that improved teaching mm -hmm. as a result, right? Um, the writers are invested in the process. They created the plan. And now, you know, they're resident experts too that can support other teachers who are implementing that curriculum after it's written. So some more things to, you know, just right. thoughts in mind behind, you know, really dedicating a team of people to writing curriculum. Yeah, for sure. You know, it makes me, as we wrap up, uh, Compass PD, like our, one of our biggest goals is helping build great schools and big great districts and so one of the ways we can help build great schools and great districts is through curriculum writing so Betsy thank you so much for joining me today it was so much fun and um I know we could talk for hours about this we've proven that to be fact Karen. yes we have every, every Saturday morning 6 30 a.m so if anyone wants to join us and talk about curriculum we would be happy to have you yeah. <laughs> So um, thank you so much and wishing everyone a great day.